Welcome back to this year's Fall Movie Show on Channel Racing 2019. It is now time to introduce the 24 Women's Division T-Bars for this season, and our host, Brian James, will tell us all about it. Brandon, take it away! Alright, thank you, Paul. So how's everyone doing in Minneapolis so far? Good. I'm, I'm sure you have all smiles so far. Well, this week, on, our, on part two of our Fall Movie Show, we will introduce the 24 Women's Division Divas for the 2019-20 season. We got a whole town of them. We got Sasha Gizmo, the fastest swimmer in the league. We got Tony Griffin and Olivia Fortin and Pauline Connor. And of course, your fan favorite, Kelsey Jensen, who is the defending champion and she is the fastest runner of the league. But no matter what happens, everyone will be a winner indeed. So Paul, let's get started with the first race of the season. Alright, Brandon, I can't wait to see those ladies in action. First up, we have Allison Stewart, Mona Hartman, and Lisa Malgo. It's a pleasure to have these three girls back with us from the Child Racing Universe after they slumped during their previous season a couple years ago. So let's see which women will have a better season to start making for this season. The players are lined up ready to go, and we're ready to present the first race of the Women's Division season. Everyone's on the clock? And let's have a challenge! Alright, so Allison, Bona, and Lisa will start off the 2019-20 Women's Division season. It's season 4 of the Women's Division play. Been around since 2016-17 season. And it's been a pleasure for the past 3 seasons. Now we hope that season 4 will do a whole lot of more on the same. And right now, the free d are already eating food. And it looks like Lisa Malagor is going to have full control because Allison and Mona are both dancing to the beat. Number two will have control of first place ahead of Lisa Malagor. As number six wins the first females of the 2019-20 Women's Division season, but he was too busy eating the food and he drops down to last place. Number seven and eight also trying their best to stay alive in the game, and it looks like. Number 8 is going to be flying towards the water, so he will get a little bit of ground in the only one. As number 7, flying to stay alive or at the bridges, takes Beavis number 2 for this season. And right now, it is Laura Hartman who has the lead over Allison Stewart as they make their way towards the top of the hill. Number 2 safely in second place over the fourth good child. As number 1, well, I'm in the next command is Beavis. Trying to lead number seven does. Core number six last B month was a penny because he was busy eating the fruit. And we have passed the one minute mark. So I think he's going to need a couple more speed buzz if he wants to get back in this one. And this is the first map that makes his second speed buzz for race. Meanwhile, Alice and Score is starting to get some get the, the groove. She is catching up to our leader, Mona Hartman. Along with number two, who's still dominating in over the four switch out. And downloads Water Hartman, that's what it comes to the next match. Let's find out who will get the next command speed runs. And that next speed runs will be made by Lisa Malago. And number 8 passes from one, so he'll drop down to 5th place. Core number 1, 6, and 7, meanwhile, are all trying their best to stay alive in the game. But number 2 leaps to 4, so it's challenging us. As he will have the next command speed runs. He is battling with Water Hartman, and us is joining the freeway battle for the lead. Oh, uh, poor number one, six, and seven need help now. Who's gonna get that chance? It's gonna be number six. That makes his best be first place. Mona Hartman trying her best to defend the lead over number two and Allison Stewart. The free child gonna make their way towards the home stretch. That's the movie push on here, of course. And number two is for the rest. As we the male guard, we'll take her second speed be first race. But it will be a mule goal to catch up to Mona Hartman or Allison Stewart. Yep, numbers 1 and 7 are also snoozing, so these two shall be left behind the competition. And who will get the next one? It's number 7, that makes his first be to the race, and this race is going to be made by Mona Hartman. Mona Hartman is the first diva to secure a victory for the new season of Chow Racing 2019 for the Women's Division play. As number one, we'll get another turn. Alice and Stuart will have to come in second place. But there's always the rest of the season for Alice and Stuart. And that will be followed by 
number two, we were dominating for a place, and the last P-Bars on this place were made by number seven. So, for the hot miss, trying to turn things around for the better. That's right, she won her first race, but let's see how she will fare for the rest of the season. Back for race number two after this announcement. Alright, boss, so Ronald Hartman took it all for the first race of season four. Who will prevail in race number two? We're about to find out the going to answer, Brandon, as Sarah Graham Miller takes on Sammy McDonald and Jennifer Payton for race number two. Sarah Graham Miller, of course, was the one up for the first season of the Women's Division play back in the 2016-17 season. Hopefully, she'll probably will finish up a better chance of securing her second chance at her first time this year. That's fine as I agree if that will be true or not. Everyone's on clock, and we start the race! <coughs> Alright! Second race of the 2019-20 Women's Division Rock Season Play. At the moment, Hartman took home the first victory. The East Week success was shot down. We will join Mona Hartman in the winner's circle. Sarah, Sandy, and Jennifer are all shaking the palm trees. They're bringing out a guy cooking on cheap food. And now they're going to eat the food. And there goes Sarah Graham Miller busting down the line. Sandy McDonald not too far behind in second place. And where will we see Charlie heading? We're about to find out right now. It looks like Sarah Graham Miller is going to be heading for the water. There he goes with all his feelings going for his chewing fans. As the first superstar against the bus is number one. And now he will battle with number 8 for D-Life over 6th place. That will be poor number 6 fighting for D-Life behind numbers 1 and 8. And it looks like Sammy McDonald will have control of speed bus number 2. She's trying her best to catch up to our leader. Sarah Grimboy, along with Jennifer Payton, and a couple of silver child numbers 2 and 7 to be exact. And now it is Jennifer Payton who will get his speed bus. Try to battle with number two and seven for second place. Take a look at point number six and number one. They're both getting left behind on the competition all the way in the back. But who really got the next command speed As we pass the one minute mark, it is going to be number then number two who gets and who leads over the five to a child with an easy second place. Sad McDonald better hurry up. She's going battling with number eight for fifth place at the current moment. Find out who will get the next Smash Bros. And it will be number 7 who will get that next B Bus. Meanwhile, numbers 1 and 6 continue to battle for T Life. All the way in the back of the pack. Number 6 sees like he's winning the battle for T Life over number 1. But I think both of them should be in the SP Bus right now. And it will be number 1 who will get that chance. And look at that. Number 6 talks from one, so now he will try to lead number 6 in the Ducks. But I think that's all the speedbirds we're going to get for a while. At least probably until later. Let's see what happens again. Next speedbirds belongs to Sarah Glenbelly. And now she has a little bit more breathing room ahead on number two. Right now, Jennifer Payton and Sandy McDonald might need all the help from the camp to make one last ever stay alive. And here comes Jennifer Payton with another turn. That makes it second speedbirds in the race. But I think Sarah Glenbelly is going to make her fans happy. Try a death way to get a second chance to claim a Women's Division Championship title this season. No doubt about it here. As number six bites to stay alive in the next Beamers, you can tell him what up for Sarah Grimmelly. She takes a first step towards the 2020 Women's Division Championship run. That's going to be followed by Jennifer Payton, who's just coming in in second place. And number two, with a good dominating effort when fighting to the child, will take third place. At Sam McDonald will cause us to be with fourth. Alright, Sarah Graham Lloyd wins this one. But right, let's exactly hope we should have a better season this year. Race number three is on its way with three newcomers. But first, let's hear what this has to say. Alright, Paul. For this next race, we have three of our newcomers for the 2019 Women's Division Monster. That was our butt. That's right. We have Dorothy Miller, who is the daughter of the Miller family. That is, of course, Howard, Aaron, Dave, and John, our four brothers. And we got John Stefan, seemingly well enough to fulfill a dreams of winning races this year. 
And we have Cindy P. Jones waiting. Initial P in the middle name. There's what pressed it. So make sure you understand that. Anyway, welcome you three ladies to the Child Racing Universe. Hope you enjoy being able to be selected to be part of Season 4 of the Women's Division Flying this year. Let's hope for the very best in everyone. So it's indeed best of luck to the three newcomers for this race on a quest for bed break. Everyone's on the clock, and let's rock this place! So let's find out who will be the first newcomer to earn a victory for the 2019 Women's Division Monster. Dorothy, Janice, and Cindy are all making their way towards the palm trees with lots of cheery pairs from both sides of the track on their feet in a standing ovation. Right now, the three demons are at the palm trees. They're going to make on that corner and shake fruit. And now they're going to eat fruit. And there goes Cindy busting down the line. The other two demons not too far behind, along with number seven at the current point. And right now, it looks like Cindy is coming heading for the water. And Janice Devine will have the first command speed bus for this race. The first newcomer from this mission to get a speed bus. And right now, number two is going to rest all the way in the magnet pack. He might need a miracle to catch up with the others in a hurry. And he's going to take speed bus number two. And look at this. What a payoff by number two. Desperately to get back in this one. So now, with that shortcut, he now has command on the lead. Great comeback by number two. Anyway, number eight, we're having the next Kavestians trying to hold on number seven one it does. And right now it is Sydney who has the best position so far with second because number two made an incredible comeback from behind with a shortcut. Sydney of course leads with the best position in second place as the next viewers we made by number seven as we pass the one minute mark. Number one is getting left behind from the other three sewer chow. And it looks like number six pauses for more. So he will drop down to last place. As number one will lead number six in us with the next command spears. And right now, Dorothy Miller is for the rest. That means Jazz the Bond will have to push about with her for third place of the three dearest going in a moment. But they need a lot of catching up to do if they want to catch up to our current best position with Sydney P. George League with second place. And here comes Dorothy Miller with the next command spears. Sydney currently has a dominating second place behind number two. Can Dorothy or John Janice make the statement anyway one? We'll find out soon enough. Next speed belongs to number eight. That makes it second speed for the base. And right now number one is just approaching while still way behind along with number six all the way in the back. And right now as the child make the way towards the wall, it is number seven who will get the next class, yes? And Sydney was pausing for more, so now Dorothy Miller will have to push a bow with her for the best pitch in side quest. Number two is approaching the finish line, and it looks like Sydney's gonna take back second place from Dorothy Miller with Swiss style. As number one takes the next command spears, Sydney has regained control of second place. And as number two takes first, Dorothy and Janice won't have enough distance to catch up to her in time. As number seven takes back the back speeders, Dorothy Miller. Sydney P. Jones Wing is our winner! Congratulations to Sydney P. Jones Wing on a job well done! Thanks to Dorothy and Janice for being with us. Look forward to seeing you in the rest of the season. Coming up, we got more SI action for you, but first, have a look at this. And now we have one of the top contenders for the 2020 Women's Division Championship, but. That's right, it's Sasha Gisbello. She, as you already heard, is the best swimmer of the 24 Women's Division Divas. And I'm pretty sure he might as well go for it all in the playoffs this year. Tonight, she'll be taking on Maria Schneider, the wife of Chris Schneider, and the debut of Thelma Dolls. Welcome, Thelma, to the Charlie's and Yellows. Hope you have a great first season. And Chris, I'm so excited to have Maria Schneider back with us after a couple of years. So let's hope for the very best for these three stars, especially the Sergeant Gets Bowl, who's trying desperately to reach the playoffs this year. I will watch on the clock, and please start the race! And now my goal is to the rest. That means Sergeant Gets Bowl, and Maria Schneider will have the opening edge. We'll soon find out which one of them will be off, but not a new one. And last
like we always say going off our weekly show, just like last time, anything can happen. That's the model we say that anything can happen in Charlie's universe and the fans being 100% positive. Find out Sasha gets fun, which are ready to fill and there they go. Sasha going leads over Maria by a couple of feet. And will Miss Charlie heading next or just approaching the bridges right about now? It looks like Sasha gets most gonna be heading for the water. As Bell and all, who is dancing to the beat all the way back in the politics, who will win the only toss this time around. And right now, number two is getting left behind in the competition at number six for less. But boy, number two made an incredible comeback from behind during that last race. Let's just say it's a one hit one. Anyway, he is going to head to water just like last time. And who has to be as number two? It's number six, as number one is one last one, number two to be exact. Anyway, Sasha Gizmo now has a commanding lead over the other two in the U.S. in the guy point. He is, she is safely in the lead as she makes his way towards the sapphire portion of the other course. As number seven, who will leave, sweeping number two in the dust, takes the next command from the U.S. Now number two is getting left behind on the competition. We have passed the one minute mark in this race, and number two is getting left behind from the other seven child. And number eight toss, so he will join number two for the life all the way in the back. As number seven, who leaves the two jump in the dust, takes back to Max Pierce. By now, Sasha gets more has a commanding lead as she heads for the wall. Meanwhile, Velma, who just went down for the count, is battling with Maria Schneider for second place. But Sasha gets both, is just an long gone, ladies and gentlemen. Next Pierce belongs to number two. He was going to rest, but now he's leaving number eight in the dust. Boy number 8 is getting left behind after number 2 takes the last speed bus. So now he will get a speed bus. Trying that sweet to stay alive in the game. Sasha gets more squid of us. And Belmas might honestly have catch up to him. But I do agree Sasha gets though is going to get the victory for this race. Belmas not might not have enough distance to catch up to her. Sasha gets most going to use all of her swimming ability to run away from those two divas. And number seven will get another turn. That makes his first be both face. And he can't forget about going rest. And there goes Sasha gets Paul. Quickly leaving Maria and Velma in the dust. And she is gonna do it. Sasha gets Paul is our winner. As the next be bus on the race will be, will be in number two favor. Who we four number eight in the dust. Four number eight is getting all along last place. It will be appropriate if he were to get at least one more speed bus before the race is over. But that last speed bus is in number seven's favor. Who leads point number two in the dust. Alright, well done, Sasha gets power. That's right. She's trying desperately to reach the playoffs this time around. I'm pretty sure he's trying to get the job done this year. Back for the second half of the women's division races after these messages. Paul, this race will feature a contender from last season's playoff run. That's right, it's Olivia Fortin for race number 5. She was a 2018 Women's Racing Champion, but she had to sell for 4th place during her first season in 2018-19 season last year. She'll be taking on Joy Maymore and Emily Hefner. Emily is new to the Women's Racing Child Racing Universe, so a pleasure to have Emily with us for the first race of her career. Olivia Fortune trying to get back to the playoffs so that she can have another chance at reaching her second Women's Racing Championship appearing. Let's hope for the value as a new one. Best of luck to these three divas, and please start the runs! And Olivia Fortune is one of us. Along with a couple of super job by Ray Wilson. Yep, so it's Zoe Baylor and Emily Hefner. And number 8, who will have control of this match for the moment. Zoe and Emily are making their way towards the bond breeze, along with number 8. So, so two divas and there's one super child going to take the party to bring down that cooking and cake fruit. And now they're going to eat the fruit. And there goes Zoe Baylor, busting down the line. And look at that. And we have the extension to the beat. So this race is all about Zoe Baylor up in the front. As the first of the time against Beavis is number seven. Who just finished her beating the food in time. And now he'll get a little bit of ground in the only one. And we'll go stay left behind already. It's number six, that's who. 
Yes! So we may want. That's when they keep a huge knee up in the front. Thanks, B, by the summer to this face. By now, it comes to a shower, and, and we have fun trying to best stay alive while we're at the water. So we may want has no bonus to worry about for the cowboy. She is safely in the lead, heading into the sad fire portion of the airport. As number two, who definitely needs to catch up every now and then, takes next to us. He is powering with number one and number six for the line. Number seven, now he dominates over the five, so it's out with an easy third place. Olivia Fortin still running around in second place. As the next viewers win made by, and we have her. <coughs> and right now, number two is possible for one. Yep, that means he'll drop down the last place behind number six. Number six trying his best to catch her in the car. And it looks like number one time for one. And who got the next team us? It's Olivia Fortin, the 2018 Women's Division Champion. Right now, it's only day one. It's making the first to all. Well, trying to defend a huge lead still over Olivia Fortin right now. Olivia Fortin, my new heart, help for his best. He wants to make fast more like anyone. Let's see what happens to the back. Next PS belongs to number two. That makes his second speed of the race. And look at that. And we have for is for us. So he will drop down the last place behind number two. Now and we have Faye is getting right uh, behind the competition. So she's gonna need a couple of speedbirds before she as well. Well, you know where to get back in this one, and this is the first of them. And right now, that makes her second speedbird for the base. And right now, Olivia Fortin is for us. So Zoe Baywell will have this base all around the ladies and gentlemen. I believe Zoe Baywell is gonna get her first win plus making the 2020 playoffs this season. As number two, we'll get another turn that makes his first peak by the base. And Zoe Bay one has to face all up that way, ladies and gentlemen. Olivia Fortin won't have enough distance to catch up her in time. Zoe Bay one wins this one as Olivia Fortin, who just got in second place just now, takes the next peak. And right now, numbers two and six are both getting left behind and got the picture all the way back from the yellow zero job. And it'll be number two who will get another speed us. And this one will be pouring number six in the dust. And that concludes this space for the women's division play. So, Zoe B1 wins this one, and she promised she'll go all the way towards a women's division playoff appearance. That's right, that's all for the very best of run for Zoe and her adorable fans. Back in a bit, don't go away. And now we have the defending third place finalists. That's right. Next up, we have Christina Bennett taking on Nicole Hamilton and Racine Lamar. Welcome, Nicole and Racine, to our show. Christina Bennett was surely happy to fulfill her playoff reduction for the 2019 playoffs last season. She was very happy, and of course, she beat out Olivia Fortune in the third place playoff to create the spot on the third place podium for the 2019 final standings. Now she promised to go all the way towards a 2020 Women's Division Championship. So, will she earn her first way towards making a trip to the 2020 playoffs? Or will one of our two newcomers get the first winner of their career? Let's find out. Everyone is on the clock, and let's bump this place! Alright, so Christina Bennett trying to catch up with both Nicole Hamilton and Lucia Lamar in a battle for the first win of the 2019-20 season here on Charlie Singh. And by now number 8 is for the rest, that means he'll be left behind in the competition for a while. The free d will run to eat the food, and Nicole Hamilton is going to have control because Racino Lamar is dancing to the beat. And where will Nicole hand it towards next? It looks like she is going to be heading for the one trying to maintain a huge lead. And let's find out who we're getting the only toss for this place. And that opening toss for this place will be made by number two, who just went to rest for a while. And right now he is leaving number eight in the dust all the way in the bang of the pack. Now number eight is trying desperately to catch up. He is going to hit the water. And number six, I see, has took a shortcut. That's good news for number six. As he misses number two in this place, we made by Christina Bennett. Number six paid off a shortcut strategy. And now he will have a command lead. He's already heading into the side fire portion of the aim course, dominating over the fire to a job for sure. And let's find out who will get the next command speed bus. And that next speed bus 
of this exciting race were made by number 8, who is trying desperately to catch up with number 7 for 6th place. Right now, it is number 2 as we pass the 1 in mark, who is getting left behind in the competition all the way in the back, behind number 7 and number 8 for sure. And it will be Christina Bennett, the defending third place finalist, who will take the next command because Nicole Hamilton safely in second place behind number 6. But we see Lamar still has a chance to catch up to Ryan Hurley. And right now it is number 7 who will get the next command because he is going to lead numbers 2 and 8 in the dust all the way in the back. Poor number 2 is still getting left behind the competition. Number 8 also more really needs help, and I mean now. But it's number 1 who leads numbers 2 and 8 in the dust along with number 7 who will have the next command because and Nicole Hamilton on the top of the wall is with us. That means we'll see you tomorrow. We'll have the privilege to battle with from the lead as they make their way towards the wall stretch. And in fact, we'll see you tomorrow. Get the next command from us. And right now, number six, trying to wrap things up. He is going to win in first place. That means this race will go to the next back standing of the 3 d US. Yeah, there he is. Making his way to first place. And there he is. Next BS belongs to. Number 8, who's still trying that way to get back in this one. That makes his second few as face. And this fifth week is going to belong to a CEO Mar over Nicole Hamilton. For CEO Mar, the second place, beats out Nicole Hamilton for her first win of her career. And we have just enough time for one more speed buzz in this place. And we may buy number 2. That makes his first speed buzz the face. So, for CEO Mar with second place behind number 6, takes home her first career victory of her win's mission career. That's right, and we'll have Tony Griffin made in shine and for any redemption run later on, but first let's hear what from this. Okay, Paul! We have just two more races left for any women's division of our final preview show. That's right, and one of those remaining races will feature last season's runner-up, Tony Griffin. She'll be taking on Diana Jamacha and Marissa Heaton. Marissa is the wife of the very talented Alec Heenan Sr. He is expected to be back next season for Child Racing 2020, so don't miss his death. As for last season's one of up, Tony Griffin finished second behind fan favorite Kelsey Jensen in last season's 2019 Women's Mission Championship. This season, she promised her fans to go all the way and will give all her best to try to get back to the Women's Mission Championship for her second chance at claiming a Women's Mission title. So, let's see if that will be true or not. The players are lined up and ready to go. And everyone is on the clock. And we start the race. And Diane Chimancha is for the rest. That means Tony Griffin and Marissa Heaton will have the opening edge. Tony and Marissa are making their way towards Padres. And another super chair is going to rest as well. <coughs> Right now, Tony Griffin and Marissa Heaton are at the Padres. They're with the Wee Chicken Canal and Coconut Chief Fruit. And now they're going to eat the fruit along with number two. And there they go. Number two has come in over Marissa Heaton. That's followed by Tony Griffin in third place. As number eight speed bus was just a little too early. But hey, at least he's leaving numbers one and seven in the dust. Anyway, he got the only dust for this race, no matter what happens. He is currently leading numbers 1 and 7 in the dust. At speed bus number 2 in this place, we may buy number 6, who's trying to lead over the 5 0 challenge fair place. Marissa Heaton trying her best to defend the lead over last year's final out, Tony Griffin. Tony Griffin starting to feel the gloom, as a matter of fact. She doesn't want to spoil a chance at a second chance at a women's mansion title this season. <clears throat> Who got the next speed bus? It's Number one, as uh, number eight drops stuff we read the pause. And right now, number seven is getting left behind in the competition, all the way in the back of the pack behind numbers one and eight. As number eight, who we'll have the next command speed he is trying to lead number one in the dust. Right now, it is Marissa Heaton, who's trying to defend the lead over Diane Chimacha, as number one. We'll get another turn. That makes his second speed bus in the race. And poor number seven is trying his best to catch up to both numbers one and eight. And it looks like number one is possible. That means he will drop down the last place. <coughs> As the next speed bus we made by 
number 8, who once again lead numbers 1 and 7 in the dust all the way in the back. Right now, number 6 has control of the lead over Diane Chimacha and Marissa Hina. Marissa and Diana catching up to number 6 at the camp one. Tony Griffin also trying her best to stay alive. As number 1 will get a first speed burst for this race, he is trying to catch up to number 7 for zero life. All the way in the back. There's a child climbing up the one camp one. And look at this. Diane Chimacha quickly wakes up from her second nap with the next command speed burst. Now she will have command on the lane. Tony Griffin will move up to second place, bowing with number 2. And number two is going to rest. So Tony Griffin will have control of second place. But she might need all her help for the fans to make the pass from Diane Chimacha. Will she? As Marissa here takes the next few trying to stay alive in the game, it looks like Diane Chimacha is going to hold off Tony Griffin for the victory. So Diane is going to take her first step towards coming back next season. As Marissa Heenan gets back to Max Spears, it's Diane Chimacha who holds off Tony Griffin with stock. Diana Chimacha gets her first victory on the 2019 season. That's going to be called by Tony Griffin in second and Marissa Heenan in third. So, Diana Chimacha, congratulations on a job well done. Congratulations indeed. And we got a favorite defending champion, Kelsey Jensen, ready for the grand finale of our Final Preview Show. That will happen right after we hear one from this. All right, Channel Racing Universe, this is it! Your fan favorite Kelsey Jensen is making her way to the starting gate. And Paul, who is our defending women's champion, going to face in race number 8. Well, Brandon, Kelsey Jensen is going to face Pauline Carter, who is the 2017 women's champion, and the debut of Penny Days. Penny Days is the daughter of the two great brothers, Tommy and Kenny, which they should be by next season. Anyway, welcome Penny Days to the program. I hope you will join us for our adventure towards the board. But all eyes are on the defending champion, Kelsey Jensen, and she needs all the help from her fans to help her get a chance to repeat as her champion. So fans, let's make that happen for the girl you have loved all these years. Let's have a challenge! And as Penny goes past, Kelsey Jensen's running wild on the off, blazing quickly towards the palm trees. <coughs> Kelsey Jensen is shaking the palm trees and bringing down that cool and that fruit. And now she's going to eat the fruit. And she is off and running, folks. The fans are cheering on and probably chanting for Kelsey's name as well. But anyway, they're cheering on Kelsey online. And it looks like Pauline Garner is dancing to the beat. That means Penny Day is about to push to catch up to her in a little bit. But the fans are sure cheering on Kelsey Jensen with all their heart. Trying to help her repeat as well as the major champion for 2020. And Penny Nades is in for the water as she will have the, the last opening toss of our fall preview show. And right now number 7 is getting left behind on the competition. And right now number 8 is for rest. So he will join number 7 for a duo all the way back over at the bridges. As the best number 2 in this race. Boy made by Pauline Garner. She wants the season one champion of the 2016-17 season of the women's division play. Right now, Kelsey Jensen has a commanding lead over Penny Days, who is safely in second place in the cup one. We are approaching the one minute mark in this race. And let's find out who will get the next command viewers. And that next viewers will be made by <coughs> number two, who is trying desperately to catch up in the crowd. And guess who's battling for two life on the way in the back of the pack? It's number seven and number eight fighting for two life on the way in the back of the pack. But it's back to number two we go. And right now number number six passes for boys so on number two. While the push about with him one for the lead over the five switch out. Meanwhile, Pauline Carter and Penny Days are trying their best to catch up with our leader, Kenny Days. <coughs> and who got the next one? It's number seven. Try that way to get back in this one. Kelsey Jensen is safely in the lead. Now rolling about Pauline Connor or Penny Days to do at the cut point. Next BS belongs to number six. He will lead number seven us. And poor number eight is getting left behind on a competition all the way in the back of the pack. 
Ah, uh, see, he hits the wall. <clears throat> and the next beam is going to be made by number six. That back to back beamer is for number six. And right now, Penny Day is trying to make one last ever save alive. But the fans are sure going, going to be happy with Kelsey's result tonight. Kelsey Jensen wins this one for a double fans on the Chatways in the Universe. At number seven, we'll get his second speed bus race. Well done by Kelsey Jensen. That's what a champion fan favorite is all about here in the Chatways in the Universe. Penny Days gets the credit for coming in second place. And the last speed bus on his face we may buy but we got it. Well done, Kelsey Jensen, on job well done. That's why right. we give all the credit to Kelsey Jensen on her hard work. We're going to be announcing some tournament challenge qualifiers to close our show, and that will happen right after the break. All right, Paul, I think it's time now to introduce the tournament qualifying agents for the month of so July and for the month of August 2019. That's right. We have eight nations that are held by an independent adjudicator that are going to Quito, Ecuador for the 2019 Tournament Champions this year. For the month of July, we got Ramaduda of Egypt, Hairo Jedaya from Japan, Sejo Harwell from Liberia, and 2016 Supreme Champion Paul Watos from the Netherlands. And for the month of August, Sejo Mikolce will represent Russia, no one palm will have a sense of Magia. We have Chuna Sweet from the Bahamas and Justin Mellows from Trinidad and Tobago. So congratulations to these eight participants from those eight respective nations for the months of July and August. We'll see them for the 2019 tournament champions in Kyo Ecuador at the end of this year. Back to you, Braden. All my fans of Indianapolis. Thanks for coming to our annual final preview show here on John Weezy 2019. It's a pleasure to have you guys here to cheer on our favorite men's superstars and our women's divas in high for the remainder of the 65th season of John Weezy. We'll be back in two weeks from now to present the official return of season 65 of John Weezy 2019 with more excitement and surprises in store for you. Until then, it's Van Jan Kai off. Keep on smiling, enjoy the best of the golden days of summer, and so long everybody! Small microphone sign off. Thank you for joining us for our annual Fall of the Show here on Chow Racing this week. Join us in two weeks from now for the official return of our 65th season of America's favorite Chow Emperor Series, Chow Racing 2019. See you then!